here are four problems from the first law of thermodynamics and this will be very useful for the exam. The first question talks about a PV diagram that is shown here and it has uh, 1.8 grams of helium that undergoes three processes. The first process is from 1 to 2 which is at constant volume as you can see so 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 is an isothermal process and then the third process from 3 to 1 is an isobaric process which is at constant pressure and you have to find the value of V3 which is the volume here at state 3 Now, the ideal gas constant is given in two units, but we will always be using joule per mole Kelvin, which is 8.314. The atomic weight of helium is also given. Now, in order to first, in order to find the volume V3, we have to first find the number of moles in the gas. Now, T1 is given as 310 Kelvin because that's 37 degrees Celsius. T2 is 930 Kelvin from 657 degrees Celsius. P1 by T1 is P2 by T2 and we could actually find pressure at P2. I'm just showing you that you could find that pressure using this formula, but really in this problem, you do not have to find that pressure. Just trying to show you that at constant volume, the pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So you would get it as 6 atm for sure, because the pressure, the, the, the temperature is actually tripled, if you know, and therefore the pressure will also triple because they are directly proportional. Now you don't need that like I said to find the volume. This is what you need to do. At state 1 we can apply the ideal gas equation for which you need to find the number of moles. The number of moles is just 1.8 gram divided by 4 gram per mole which gives 0.5 moles. So if you look at the units, you can understand that the total mass divided by the atomic mass will give you the number of moles. So we're talking about state one, and at state one, we know the temperature. We know the number of moles now. We do know the pressure. And so we can apply it into the ideal gas equation. And you know that ATM is converted into Pascals by multiplying with 10 to the 5. And so from there we can calculate the volume. So the volume is 5.8 times 10 to the negative 3 meter cube. Now knowing the volume here, uh, we can find the volume at 3 because we know that the pressure is a constant therefore the ratio of the volume to the absolute temperature must be equal so the pressure being constant B1 by T1 should be equal to E3 by T3 from which we can find the volume. A very important point is to note that since this is an isothermal, the temperature at all points are equal. Therefore, the temperature at two will be the same as the temperature at three. And that is why I've taken the temperature as 930 Kelvin. For that gives the volume Uh, 
17.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meter cube. In question 2, the temperature of an ideal gas in a sealed 0.4 meter cube rigid container is reduced from 350 Kelvin to 270 Kelvin. So the first statement shows us that the volume is a constant because it's in a sealed container. The final pressure of the gas is 60 kilopascals. The molar heat capacity at constant volume is given and we have to find the heat absorbed by the gas. The heat absorbed by the gas, the heat that flows into the gas. So we know the volume as being equal, therefore V1 is equal to V2 is 0 0.40 meter cube. Volume does not change. The temperatures are given. This is the initial temperature, 350 Kelvin. The final temperature is 270 Kelvin. We do not know the initial pressure, but we do know that the final pressure is 60 kilo pascals, which is 60 times 10 to the 3 pascals. And also the molar specific heat capacity at constant volume is given as 28.0 joule per mole Kelvin. Applying the ideal gas equation to state 2, because we know the pressure there, that's the pressure, we know the volume. There's no idea about the number of moles. So from this equation, you can find the number of moles of the gas as 10.7 moles. Once we know the number of moles, we know that the formula for quantity of heat absorbed is usually mass times specific heat times change in temperature. Mass multiplied by specific heat times change in temperature. But since uh, it is the molar specific heat that's given, instead of mass, we're going to use number of moles. So the quantity of heat is number of moles times specific heat uh, times change in temperature. Number of moles is 10.7. That is the specific heat at constant volume. You have the change in temperatures as 270 minus 350 because that's final takeaway initial. And that gives negative uh, 23,968 joules, which is negative 23.9 kilojoules. This again is a very important problem because it shows how uh, the formula for quantity of heat absorbed changes from mass times specific heat into number of moles times specific heat. This, this question talks about an adiabatic compression. The final pressure is being given as 0 0.560 times the initial pressure. And the final volume is 1.50 times the initial volume. And you're asked to find the adiabatic constant for the gas. So since it's an adiabatic process, we have to use the adiabatic equation. But first, the given quantities, if you take P1 as X, then P2 is 0.560x because P2 is 0 0.560 times the initial. Similarly, if the initial volume is y, then the final volume is 1.50y. 
And this is the equation for an adiabatic process, P1, V1 raised to gamma is equal to P2, V2 raised to gamma. Because PV raised to gamma is a constant. Do you remember that gamma is the ratio of specific heats? And that is what is to be found in this problem. It's called the adiabatic constant. So, substitute the, the values there that we have assumed. And now in this quantity, this whole thing is raised to gamma. So when you raise it to gamma, you know that this is actually two quantities. It's 1.50 raised to gamma times y raised to gamma. Right? I've canceled the x from both sides. And I've, I've split this into its two quantities, which means you can cancel the y raised to gamma. And from there, 1.50 raised to gamma is 1 divided by 0.560. And the value of this is 1.785. So when you come to this uh, stage, now you need to figure out gamma for which we're going to use a particular method where you have to take the logarithms on both sides. When you take the log on this side, we see that you're going to get gamma log 1.50 is equal to log of 1.785. That's This is because x raised to y, when you take the log, it becomes y log x. So, so that's the formula. x raised to y, when you take the log, becomes y times log x. So that's what I've done here. So that's our x, that's our y, it becomes y times log x. So now gamma is simply log 1.785 by log of 1.5. So this is not natural log, it's log to the base 10. Remember that. So gamma is 1.43 when you do that. In this question, an ideal gas initially at 300 Kelvin and occupying a volume of 20 liters is adiabatically compressed. Now its final temperature is 400 Kelvin and gamma is 1.30. What is its final volume? So here, the two quantities given are temperature and volume. And therefore, we have to use the adiabatic equation, which is in terms of temperature and volume, which is, which is what we're going to use, T V raised to gamma minus 1. Before that, T1 is 300 Kelvin, V1 is 20 liters, which is to be changed in a meter cube. 1,000 liters is 1 meter cube, so that's why you get 20 times 10 to the negative 3. T2 is 400 Kelvin, that's the final temperature, and uh, we have to find the final volume. So T V raised to gamma minus 1 is a constant, which means T1 V1 raised to gamma minus 1 should be equal to T2 V2 raised to gamma minus 1. So now we have to separate V2. Which will give us this. And since gamma is 1.30, this become 0.3. This will also become 0.3. Uh oh, so yeah, I think yeah, you get zero point two three two, 
and then once again you have to take the log on both sides which gives 0 0.3 log v2 is equal to log of 0 0.232 So when that is calculated, we get negative 0. Point, no, that was for the first one, but I made a calculation mistake. So it's negative 2.115. That is log V2, therefore V2 would be the anti-log of that, which you can get from your calculator. And that's going to be point oh oh seven six seven meter cube which is 7.67 .67 liters so these problems uh, are just important uh, so make sure that you study and understand them for the exam thank you